uh, happy Friday. Okay, so uh, I thought we were going to get an answer on this. Judge McAfee says, I need about two more weeks for a determination. Um, were you surprised by that? I was, Andrew, and Judge McAfee said initially he was planning on ruling today, but yeah. then he said there's some questions of law and fact that he had to get settled, and I'm sure he's going to draft a written order. It's likely going to go up on appeal if the motion is denied and Willis is not disqualified. So I probably wanted to create a good record for those appellate courts that are looking at the case. They know the basis for his ruling, and he just didn't want to rule from the bench. All right, let's uh, first start with the state's arguments uh, about what they were saying as to why Fonnie Willis should stay on this case and should not be disqualified. Um, her attorney, Abadi, argued this, because one of these key questions, Nima, uh, was about whether or not Fonnie Willis financially or materially benefited from hiring Nathan Wade to the office. Um, her attorneys argued this. If Fonnie Willis wanted to benefit financially from this case. Why has Willis repeatedly asked for a trial date to be set as soon as possible? What do you make of that argument? Does that have any credence, do you think? I don't necessarily think it's a good argument. The argument oh. being that, you know, if she wanted to milk this, they'd push it out further. Yeah. But we all know that if President Trump is reelected in November, there's a likelihood that all of his criminal problems go away. Now, I understand this is a state case and it's really unprecedented, but DOJ guidance have historically said that a sitting president can't be prosecuted. So I think they would take that stance if Trump were reelected in November. Yeah, let's go into some of these other, I guess, arguments too from, from the state. I mean, Abadi really called into question, Nima, some of these key witness testimonies, both from Robin Yurti, a former friend of Willis, and Terrence Bradley, a former, I guess, law partner and divorce attorney for Nathan Wade. You know, Abadi essentially said that these witnesses lied on the stand, that their accounts of when the relationship started, and that is the key question, are inaccurate. I believe I have the kind of verbate of it here. I'll let you respond to this, but but he questioned the credibility of that testimony from both Bradley and Yurti. Um, do you think the judge took that in stride too, or, or was that flimsy at best? Well, the judge has to assess the credibility of witnesses in a case like this. Obviously, there's no jury. And you have Yurti and you have Bradley, so we'll start with Yurti. She's a former colleague, former friend, right? This is someone that at least the state would argue maybe has an ax to grind. Uh, but really, if you're the defense here, and whether you're defending Donald Trump or one of the other 14 co-defendants, you're going to argue, well, this is an independent witness. And then you sort of turn to Bradley, right? Here's someone that was a former colleague as of, well, this time of Nathan Wade, a former law partner, and actually represented him in his divorce, which is the basis for all of this. Now, the question is, you know, Wade allegedly fired Bradley for some sexual assault, you know, is this someone who's salty? Is this someone that's trying to uh, enact some revenge? But really, you know, those text messages, I think that was the best evidence in the case where he's texting the defense and he's saying it. the relationship absolutely started uh, before he was hired in 2021. The relationship yeah. started, and of course, Willis is saying, no, it, it started after 2022, after Wade was hired. Yeah, I have the quote here. Uh, Abadi said this, Terrence Bradley and I believe the one thing that the state and defense counsel can agree on, that he was less than honest at times during the proceeding and during his testimony. You know, that's been kind of a common feature and theme of this whole disqualification here. And it's like a he said, she said type thing where, you know, the defense gets up and says, well, that's not entirely accurate. And then the state gets up and says, well, that's not entirely accurate about these really um, key witness testimonies. Have you noticed that? You know, I have, Andrew, and here's the part that bothers me. Look, people lie all the time in court, and <laughs> defense lawyers, they need to do their job. But the former prosecutor to me says that if you're a prosecutor, you're a public servant, you have to be held to a higher standard. Your word cannot even be questioned. So now you have Bonnie Willis on the stand, and, you know, she's defensive, she's being aggressive, um, her credibility has been questioned, Nathan Wade. I don't think he testified particularly well either. So now, instead of focusing on the issues in the case, right, there's this unnecessary distraction, the circus. We're talking about sexual activity in the office and, you know, whether Wade was going to her condo. I mean, 
it's really cast a cloud over the proceedings regardless of what McAfee's ruling is. All right, let's move uh, you know, from the state's arguments to the defense. Um, Steve Sadow, he's Trump's lawyer. He says this, this is his bottom line. He argues it's all about timing of the relationship. That's one of these key questions. And that uh, Terrence Bradley's texts with one of these defense attorneys, uh, for Michael Roman, one of the defendants, Ashley Merchant, that that is enough to prove Willis and Wade lied about when their relationship started. Uh, he also went one step further and argued the judge does not have to find that Willis and Wade lied under oath, but that the judge just has to have genuine concerns about their credibility and truthfulness. So it seems like both the defense uh, and the state, they're not going that far. They're not, you know, alleging perjury here that, you know, these witnesses lied under oath. They don't need that, according to Steve Sadow. All they need is for the judge to be skeptical about the timeline put forth by Wade and Willis. Is really that the bar? That's all Judge McAfee needs to disqualify? I don't think so, Andrew. And I think that's why McAfee is going to take his time and okay. issue that written ruling. And you know, the defense argued today that there was a fraud on the court, right? Willis and Wade were lying. But McAfee had some good questions. He said, well, even if they're lying, isn't that an issue for the Georgia State Bar? Is it an ethics issue? I think the problem the defense is going to have here is they're really making that logical leap from lying about the relationship to a financial conflict of interest. And I think that's where the evidence is missing for the defense. And that's why I think if I had to guess today, I think regardless of the outcome, you know, when the relationship started, I don't think the defense has gotten to that conflict of interest. Oh, interesting, because there are these kind of two glaring, burgeoning opening questions here. You know, it's the uh, whether or not they financially benefited from their relationship uh, and, and the nature of when the relationship started and, and the defense has been trying to square that circle. You don't think they can get there? I think it's going to be hard for them. Again, okay. it, I'm not saying that Wade and uh, Willis have been honest about their timeline. There's some uh -huh. evidence that suggests that they're not. But, you know, it's really a question of is it a conflict of interest, right? I mean, I we've seen it. Over the years, I'm mean, going back to OJ, right? Okay. I mean, there were attorneys in that case. They're on the same side. They're having a relationship. There's nothing wrong with two consenting adults having a relationship. And I understand that maybe Wade was married at the time, but you need something more. You need a conflict. So you need some unlawful scheme, for instance. You know, Willis is hiring Wade, so she benefits financially, or some conflict with the defense, or conflict with the judge. You know, the two lawyers on the same side. Having sexual relations, it's just not enough, Andrew. And that's where we may be in this case. All right. Nima Ramani, we got to leave it at that. Always appreciate your insight. We'll talk soon. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me.